about it. Andrew, we'll recall, this has been a process that has taken a, a long amount of time. We actually had uh, responses to an RFP back in December 2011, and we signed a letter of intent in November 2012, and today I'm going to give you an update of where we are with the current negotiations. In this repositioning of Waterside, one of the key aspects was that there was no upfront cash outlay from the city. So in other words, the Cordish company would have an investment and they would be able to recoup their investment from a series of revenue sources, which we call revenue sharing or uh, but for taxes. So in other words, um, without the particular development, the revenue would not be generated. Uh, with that said, where we are today, we continue to have no upfront cash outlay from the city and the Cordish company is willing to invest up to $40 million in the repositioning of Waterside, which is uh, more than the initial investment uh, in their response to the RFP and more than the investment that we discussed in the letter of intent. The direct revenue sources uh, to the city that come from this particular project are actually seven uh, real estate, business, personal property, utilities, a B pole, retail sales, food and beverage, as well as admissions. But in the revenue sharing program that uh, we're, we would engage in, only three of those revenue sources would be subject to the revenue sharing. So, in other words, the real estate, the business, personal property, the utilities, and the B pole. 100% of that would accrue to the city. Only the retail sales, the food and beverage, and the admissions would be the revenue sources that we would share at some, some level. <clears throat> so I'll walk you through the terms. Starting off with the original proposal back in December 2011 uh, to the letter of intent in November 2012 and where we are today. Uh, the, Length of the lease has not changed. So basically, there's it's a 50-year lease with two options. Where we are today, those options are two 15-year options, which are only met when certain requirements are met. If we, we get to that point, uh, the revenue sharing. If you go back to the original proposal, the concept was to have uh, the Cordish company have 100% of those three revenue sources: the sales, the food and beverage, and the admissions over a 30-year period. Uh, what would occur in terms of that breakout of revenue, the estimate would be that the Cordish company would have about $56 million accrued to them over that 30-year period, but the city would still get $67 million in direct revenue. I think it's important to make that distinction between direct revenue and indirect revenue. As I discussed earlier, we we're discussing seven revenue sources that we can account for that come in directly to the city, but indirect revenue for instance, if there's a salesperson that's hired and in a particular company, we have an arrangement with the company, and that salesperson goes out and purchases the sandwich, uh, that's not a part of this direct revenue, but it's still revenue that's collected by the city. So while we have not quantified the indirect revenue that would be associated with this project, it would be over and above even the $67 million that was provided in the original proposal. By the time we got to the letter of intent, the, the terms of the lease stayed the same, but the revenue sharing changed. And instead of 100% of those three revenue sources, uh, there was really two phases. 70% would be shared with the sales, food and beverage, and emissions tax over, let's say, phase one, the first 15 years of the project. And what was important at that time was to make sure that there was some type of refresher. Um, those associated with Waterside understood that over the years things changed. It was important to keep the establishment fresh. So this refresher gave us an opportunity to have a larger investment from the, um, the Cordish company. So to refresh it after year 15 would allow for a revenue sharing, which they would get up to 50% of those three revenue sources. So what we had at the letter of intent was basically $30.4 million of possible revenue if the investment was made for the Cordish company. And then that direct city benefit over the same 30-year period being $93 million. So all in, about $123 million from um, the revenue sources associated with this project and based on Cordish's projections for sales. 
So as I bring you up to date with where we are today, uh, we take that column that relates to the letter of intent and I will compare it with the current terms that I'll present to you. Uh, basically the length of the lease stays the same. Uh, the revenue sharing is just basically 70% over that 20 year period. So in other words, um, and the investment, as long as the investment is made, there's a, a cap of 80% of whatever that investment is. And those three revenue sources would be what's shared over that finite period of time to make back the, the money that's invested. And that would be 20 years. The estimated payout increases slightly from 30.4 million to about $32 million. So that's about a million six more than where we wrote the letter of intent. But the direct, and again, not the indirect, but just the direct revenue to the city is still over $91 million. So uh, that's where we are, and I would like to uh, provide with you some of the keys to this negotiation over time. Again, um, Cordish would assume all the management, the operating, leasing, and improvement costs. No upfront capital investment by the city. And I think what's most important is that it shifts both the, the fiscal and the physical requirements to the private sector. One of the um, issues that we discuss during these negotiations and, and several presentations to you is that there was a, a great deal of public outreach and a number of the issues that popped up was that they wanted to make sure that Waterstein stays stayed open to the public. But also there was this question of um, could the private sector run it more efficiently than, than the public sector. By having it in the hands of the private sector, not only do they take the, the fiscal and the, and the physical responsibilities, but we have been in the past putting a subsidy to Waterside uh, to the tune of about $1.3 million annually. So that subsidy would go away. <coughs> it makes the waterfront day and night, and as we discussed earlier, it's a part of a bigger um, strategy to make sure that we have Virginia's premier urban waterfront park. And what's also important is that this project will serve as a catalyst. And as you can, as you will recall, as we went through this process, it actually provided us with a new interest in the, the site for the hotel conference center, which uh, Bruce Thompson provided an update to you today. So with that said, uh, again, the, the fiscal and economic impact a little bit north of $91 million over that same 30-year period. We would eliminate the $1.3 million general fund subsidy that goes over to Waterside. It's uh, an estimate of 1,000 new jobs created, and it establishes that, that catalyst for future development. The next steps would be the council approving us moving forward, and we would also have a public hearing that would be scheduled next Tuesday for a formal vote. So that's uh, my update to the council and where we are in the negotiations. Two questions. Yes. So we're going from a $28 million investment to a $40, a $40 million investment yes. by uh, quarters. Uh, as relates to BPO tax, are we going to we'll be able to deal with the individual entities or will this be under an umbrella and we would deal with quarters? <coughs> well, in, in terms of... Uh, would it be in terms a master? Uh, it, it won't be a master BPO tax. Um, that Cordish may well have a B-Pole tax, and um, they have affiliated restaurants, and so that they may be paying us for several, but like the existing tenants, the Outback, will continue to pay theirs separately. And their B-Pole tax will be continuing to be separate. separate. But as the other entities come in, we will collect that separately, or will we go through Cordish? I, I think generally it'd be uh, separate, but I think that some of the um, Restaurants that come in will have an affiliation with Cordish, and so we might get a, a larger check from Cordish than uh, just for their um, uh, being the lessor. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Well, thank you, uh, Marcus. I know you uh, put a lot of it's an understatement. So you put a lot of time and effort in this, and I this comes with your recommendation as yes. well. Okay. Thank you. Anything else? Thank you. Okay, Marcus, thank you. We stand adjourned. Okay.